Hey guys and girls, Nuclear Rabbit here. Since I finished Classic with every class, I figured I would make a long video with all of them together. Now, do keep in mind that some of these videos are quite old at this point. And one more thing, this does not mean that I will not be doing any more Classic runs. There will be more runs. I'll do a second run with every class at some point. But it seemed nice to do the first round of them together in a compilation, like a season 1 of the Classic runs. But that is quite enough of me introducing this. Enjoy the videos and good luck on your own grinds and runs. Hello and welcome, this is the Nuclear Rabbit and today I'm playing Classic, because I can. So first off, things are different in Classic. Oh my god, that inventory. As usual with a Barbarian, we start off by buying some Scepters, because those just deal the most damage. And we start off perfectly fine by almost dying in the Underground Passage, and then I had to watch the Counters, who does not drop runes in Classic, because runes do not exist in Classic. However, it's still the best place to level because there's so many unique bosses here. Like Viper Vex here, who kills Blaze. And then I find out I can't revive her, so you can run out of mercenaries in Classic. And you can't give gear to Classic mercenaries either. Also, this is really dangerous, I should not be standing here. My life total makes me cry. And when your life total goes like that, just leave the game. Don't be me, leave the game. And then we are towards the Ontario fight. Which is just the same as on LOT. And then we have the horrors. Especially for Rasan, who dies. And Durga dies as well. Man, I am not good to my mercenaries, but luckily I'm rich, so I don't have to care about human lives. Anyway, I end up making a Tangerine Scepter for some damage. It's basically just re-rolling a magic weapon for some sockets and some damage. I end up finding a ring. It's a Nagel. It's attack rating. And then I almost die, and that is a problem, so I run away. But as long as it's not me, it's okay. And then comes the Duriel fight. Which is also just the same. The boss fights are all just exactly the same on Classic. The differences really are the resistances and the later difficulties. Your mercenaries. And there's something a bit different about Whirlwind, but we'll get to that later on in the video. Duriel goes down and I have never been this happy to find a Berserker's armor. Because armors do not get sockets in this game. So you can't like make a two socket flawed ruby or resistance armor or anything. It's not a thing. Meanwhile I sneak into a cave and try to grab an eye. And then we look at the flux of the situation. Or we don't. And the council is just the same as on the resurrected version of the game, so LOD, whatever you want to call it. So we just punch them in the face and then they die. And just like in every other barbarian run, when you have a fair fight, things take forever. And I end up finding another unique ring. Okay, so there's no charms and no class specific items. So what ends up happening is that you find a lot more things that can actually roll unique. And inherently you just end up getting more uniques that way. I found a lot of uniques in this run, way more than I usually do. And that's because I'm just not finding charms. I'm not finding like class specific items that can't be unique. I'm just finding things that can actually roll unique. And you get a lot more of them that way. And I do have to say though, fighting without charms. It's actually really nice. I had so much inventory space to pick up stuff. It was amazing. It's the Chaos Sanctuary where we ring a few bells. The Hell's Bells, if you will. And then I make my version of a Tall 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 weapon. Because remember, no runes in here. And then we fight Diablo. Which is just the same fight as usual, so just dodge the lightning, make sure he's green or blue, it means he's taking damage. 
and run away when he tries to electrocute you because that's not very nice of him. Who knew the Lord of Terror, not a nice guy, who knew, who knew, who knew? Please don't fry me. But what I ended up finding the best way to play this is just going for the emulation of things that you do in the full game. So instead of a tall 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 sword, you go for a emerald sword. Instead of going for like a stealth, you try and get some resistances of your armor. You try and get some FHR off your belt, like stuff like that. But your gear is a lot less important here, which makes for a much more fluent playthrough. You really see that they balance the game around classic, you can really tell. I never felt over leveled, I never felt underpowered, I never felt like I was really in trouble, I never felt like I hit a brick wall in, or anything in the difficulty. So this was actually a very very enjoyable playthrough. When you think about it, if you kill Diablo on normal and then would head into Nightmare Act 1, like that feels very fluent. It's Act 5 that always feels like a huge difficulty spike, like the Ancients and stuff feels way more difficult, the list feels way more difficult, but if you just go into Act 1 Nightmare, you'll be fine-ish? I said fine-ish, not fine. And in Nightmare we once again just run the counters with weapons that I just bought from an NPC because I could and they were just the best thing I had. I end up respecking on level 30. Because people told me Whirlwind would be decent. And I'm curious about that. Because Whirlwind on Classic hits every frame. Yes, you heard that correctly. Every frame. Every frame. Which means it's kinda good. Yeah, that's kind of insane. Also, I find two pieces of Saigons in the span of 15 seconds. And Saigons is just super endgame GG gearing classic. Because one thing that's also not there is mid-level or high-level uniques. That's just not there. There's no warhead. There's no lore. You know what you want? Saigon's Helm. It's the best. Wanna know what the best weapon is for a barbarian? A rare Martel de Fer with some enhanced damage on it. I'm not even joking. It's the best weapon. I googled it. Anyway, I'm just fast forwarding through Nightmare because it felt like I actually played at this pace until I hit dolls. Dolls are really terrifying because if you're hitting at one frame, dolls explode way faster than you want them to. But the rest of the game on Nightmare is just complete fucking cakewalk, it's insane. I mean, look at this. Bye Diablo. The one thing that also happens when the best gear in the game just doesn't really exist is that the best farming spot in the game is Mephisto on normal. Do you know how easy it is to farm Mephisto normal? Also, you can't gamble mid-level items. You're gonna gamble pies, you can't gamble a lance or a Martel de Fer, you just can't. As I mentioned, classic resistances, way less nerfed. And then we have towards Corpfire, who is the first physical immune that we really need to kill. And as usual, it takes forever. And I decide that my damage is too low and that I need a better weapon. So I go to the lower course in Nightmare to find a magic lance that I do end up finding. Once I see it, then pick it up. And look at how much inventory space I have. And I just start re-rolling it. And I end up getting this brutal lance with 48 ED. I just end up putting perfect skulls into it. The perfect skull allows me to not use my Manalt, so I can use my Cathan's ring. Cause that's just GG gear, I respec because I want the spear mastery. So this is what I spec into. 
and then I farm the lower curve some more for a flawless skull. What I end up getting a goddamn stone of Jordan. I'm not joking. I found the stone of Jordan. Just casual stuff. And if you're thinking like, are you using that on a barbarian? It means resistances, critical hit, attack rating, everything you want. A soy gives you. And I also find a perfect skull. And now I have a 48 ED. Double perfect skull lance. And that weapon combined with the science gear is GG. Like that is just end game gear for classic. It's so cool. There's no like, I need to find a war pike. I need to find this. I need to find that. Just find the lance, go to fucking town, beat the game. It's, it's just that. It's great. It's so sad that if you got a one frame whirlwind in the complete game with like Breath of the Dying and stuff, it would be way overpowered because this felt really fun. This I had so much fun doing this run. Also, another mercenary bites the dust. And then we head towards the maggot lair. Where things are things and... I'm just kind of sad. But you do manage to get through it with some nice aiming of your whirlwinds. Yeah, please don't get stuck. So basically just clear things out and well, don't do this. I'm stuck, I can't leave the game, I can't do anything. So I want to leave this place and I end up whirlwinding through. Until I hit some weaklings and I am very powerful again. But this barbarian did something no other barbarian a casual playthrough of a solo cell phone run has ever done. This barbarian felt very powerful. This felt like on the power level of a blizzard source or a hammer din. So I can highly recommend playing classic with a barbarian. And there goes Duriel. And there go the rules. And this is me showing off. This is the one downside to the character. This is how long it takes to destroy my weapon. Yep, 30 seconds and I need to repair again. But after that we do head towards Travancore as usual. And from here on out the game is just the same until I hit Act 4 Hell Diablo. Luring the council out as usual. Don't have to worry about leaving behind your jar rune because there's no runes in the classic game. And even in Hell Act 3 you can see how powerful I am. Even the runs of hate is not a problem. Except for dolls. Because dolls are absolutely terrifying. If I press whirlwind here, I'm dead. One frame per attack kills all the dolls, which kills me. So I need to leap through. Until I hit Mephisto. Who, as you can tell, even with the random council member just showing up, is just not a problem. And there goes Mephisto. And after Mephisto, I figure like, okay, I'm just strong enough to beat the entire game. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run towards the end. So I just whirl in through Act 4. Ring the doorbell. Kill the idiots that it spawns.
This is the most powerful barbarian I've ever put through the game. I mean, there's no way a solo cell found full game expansion barbarian. Especially with fucking whirlwind goes through the game this fast. It's just not gonna happen. This was that made this so enjoyable. Like you're playing a barbarian and you have a very consistent pace of play. Instead of okay, I killed a thing. I need to repair. I need to buy pots. I can kill one more thing. Instead, you're just like actually doing stuff and it's amazing. I mean, look at that damage. This is nice. This is just nice. Like, it isn't even overpowered. A Hammer Din or a Blizzard Sword is still faster. Or a Mosaic Sin is way faster even, but this is just nice. You're actually playing a Barbarian and you're getting through the game at a very, very reasonable pace. Like, this feels like an A tier character for the expansion. However, you can't really do Act 5. And here we have the actual final boss of the game, the Infector of Souls, because this is the hardest fight I had in the entire game. Because things got really close here. Like, I needed to be very careful here. But I do end up making it to town and then I'm just whirlwinding again. And here's the final fight of the game, this is Diablo. And I'm just chunking him, and it's so satisfying. A classic Barbarian is just super satisfying to play, can highly recommend. You don't need to farm Eldritch, you don't need to farm for the Ancients, you don't need to get to level 60, you don't need to find a good weapon. Everything is just balanced around being like this, and it makes the game go by very smooth. I honestly thought Classic was a much smoother experience than the expansion. And there we have it, Diablo goes down. And here's my gear, like in LOD or whatever you want to call it, Resurrected, this will be a load of crap, like the only good item would be the SOJ. And this easily cleared the game, like no problems. And it was very satisfying, can highly recommend this, honestly I can. Here's my stats, and here we have the way cooler screen that you've beat in the game. I am the king of classic. Thank you for watching, see you all, bye bye, GG, see you for the next one. So you have the regular Diablo 2 experience, but you can also play Classic. So I've done a Classic Barbarian before, and I figured why not do a Necro? So we start off by admiring our beautiful stash, and then we head towards the Den of Evil, where we almost died to Corpse Fire. But with our new skeletons, we make it into the underground passage, where we fight a bunch of vile hunters. And one big difference between Classic and the... Lord of Destruction expansion is that in the classic version of the game the skeletons aren't actually that strong so in Lord of Destruction the expanded edition the standard resurrected edition the summon necromancer is actually one of the best builds in the game but it's a lot weaker in the classic version of the game but first off just know like things are just way scarier for the skeletons like the skeletons actually lose fights in this but they do manage to kill the smith so with that we head towards Andariel who just isn't a problem it's still the act one boss we end up finding a cool ring then we had to watch Act 2 with all of our skeletons. And wait a second, where are my skeletons? So in Classic, you do not take your skeletons and summons and all of that other bullcrap with you. Every single act, you have to restart your engine as it were to make sure that you can get going and have some skeletons. So that's not that bad in normal, but it's a problem in Nightmare and Hell for sure. I end up finding a angelic ring which is just 20 life and with my army of skeletons I just make it towards the cube so I use amplified damage here to make them deal more damage 
And in Act 2, I already have my stash full, so I'm very happy with the cube, because that means I get to re-roll some bone wands and some jewel wands. And what I'm looking for here is just plus skills. I also start to gamble some gear. Basically anything with a bunch of resistances and some life is good in normal. There are no room words in classic so you really need to just get your gear whatever way you want. And armors are all crap so that's just good to know I guess. Just a fair warning if you play classic every single armor you will ever find is bad. I don't know what's up with that just all of them are bad I don't know why. Like the best you can do is like double res with some life. Oh I almost died to the summoner here I get to 28 HP. It's way too close so I run. And decide to make a resistance shield. And then we head towards Duriel. And that one skeleton just doesn't know where the fight is apparently. Who with the power of Iron Maiden takes a while but does go down. And then we head towards Act 3. And we lose our skeletons again. With the power of a mercenary I end up making some new ones. And I find a unique full helm and that's a Dusk Deep. And you're thinking to yourself like Nuclear Rabbit why the actual are you showing this. And it's because it's one of the best helms in the game. And I find some chance guards, 32% so that's nice. I also end up finding a set belt for some 20 life, some 20 cold resist. And resistances in classic go a lot further than they do in Lord of Destruction in the full game. Because you go to minus 50 in hell instead of minus 100. And then we have a go at the council, who in normal just go down perfectly fine, no problems there. The skeletons can just surround them and kill them so that's nice. And then we head towards Mephisto. So the big danger here is the blue little ghosts. Just be careful and wary of them. And as long as you can dodge those, the Mephisto will go down very quickly. And then for Act 4, which is the biggest problem? You can't hire a mercenary here. So what do you do? You take a golem and you take Iron Maiden and you pray. That's literally the plan. So first time I get a spawn that doesn't really do stuff. So I get a second spawn and I, I Iron Maiden some Doom Knights. And I melee them as well. Because, you know, you got to start somewhere. I mean, as soon as you have the first skeleton, the game just starts going. But getting that first one, especially in hell, was just miserable. I also pressed the wrong button. That's why the corpse explosion instead of getting a skeleton. But I do end up getting my skeleton army and I make it towards Isual. And then we head towards the Chaos Sanctuary where the butlers of Diablo are waiting for us once again. And you can really tell that the skeletons are actually just kind of struggling. But they do get there. And then it's Diablo time. And Diablo has a big problem with your skeletons. In that he absolutely fucking evaporates them. So we go for our backup strategy. Which is Iron Maiden. And a Golem. But yeah fights like these really show how much weaker the Necromancer. The Summon Monster is in the Classic. You do the same strategy in the full game. But you have a lot more to work with. You have items that can actually boost you can get some skills, you can get like a lore if you really grind, you can you can get something going. And here you just run around and cast golems and you look around for skeletons and hope for the best. So I go through the chaos sanctuary which is why I didn't want to use corpse explosion in it. So I can get some skeletons going and after reloading we go back towards Diablo who will still make absolute complete mincemeat out of my minions. Because basically what I'm trying to do is hope that Diablo just decides to slap my golem or me while Iron Maiden is on him and that deals him some damage. And that's it. That's the game plan. And if you're thinking that's not a good plan, you're correct. It's not. It works. But it's tedious as shit. So time for the second round of skeletons. Recast my golem. Lose the golem immediately. Lose half the skeletons a few seconds later. I should really do that more aggressively. Anyway, time for the third round of skeletons. And this is really nice. He walks out of the pentagram. So now he can be surrounded by the skeletons. Which helps with the damage a bit. And you can tell now he's getting surrounded. That he's actually just taking some real damage. And there he goes. He is down for normal. So this is my gear for now. As you can tell in classic gear just isn't that spectacular and by that I mean absolutely unusual in the full game. I'm level 28 right now. And these are my skills. Just all in on the skeletons and then we head towards Nightmare where I once again have to use Iron Maiden, a Golem and a Dream. 
to get my first skeleton. The one thing that really happens in Nightmare is that your skeletons start just losing the fight. Also because I just didn't spec into summon resist, but I just lost this fight, like straight up just lost it. And go ahead and get some new skeletons. And with those I just run towards Andariel, where you can really see there is still strength in numbers. Also one thing I do have to say though is that the blood golem looks really fucking cool in Diablo 2 Resurrected. And I'm also using Corpse Explosion to speed up the Andariel fight a bunch. Because Corpse Explosion is 50-50 fire damage and physical damage and Andariel is very weak to fire. And after making it through Act 2, it is time for the Duriel fight. And one thing you see me doing here is I'm using an Iron Golem with a Thorns Aura. Because in the expansion, I am, I would be using the Thorns Aura myself on a bow. But I can't do that here because, well, there's no runes. And the other thing I would be doing is using a Might Mercenary for some more damage. Which I also can do. Well, I can do it in Act 2, but at that point it just doesn't matter. Because it's just such a little part of the game. And the third thing I would do is get a shield go out for a fanaticism aura. So I'm 3 aura short on damage here. And at this point you can really start to tell the difference. Because I summon Necro in the expansion. Just plows through the rest of the game. You have the start of the game which is pretty dangerous until you get kind of going like level 20, 25. And after that a summon Necro is just an S tier build. Plows through everything. However in classic you're kind of struggling. Like... 3 hours is a big difference to not have. So even in Nightmare, I'm just doing the Iron Maiden strat. And it's going fine, but the expansion version of this just destroys this fight. I would also have farmed for a Dull Io if I wasn't going for a Harmony Bow. I would have also gone for a White if I hadn't gone for the Thorns Aura Bow. So that's a safer version of the build. But both versions are much stronger than what you get in Classic. The Summon Necro really got a big buff in the expansion. And up finding another rare ring, this time not that exciting. So in Act 3 you have the luck. And I honestly think this is the reason why these are here. You get to kill the flesh beast to get your skeletons going. And I usually was like, I don't care. It's just lore, who cares? But I was so happy with the flesh beast here. Because they're very easy to iron maiden to death. Which means you get to get going. And here I have to be very careful. The trash has punched me in the face a bunch. And you have to be very careful on which aura you use on which monster. Like the treasures and the blunderbores and stuff. I am using Iron Maiden on because it's just more damage than using Amplified Damage. I end up finding a Venom Ward and you're thinking like why do you care? It's Nightmare. Venom Ward is just a legit good armor in this game. I mean Venom Ward is seriously just endgame GG gear. Well maybe not GG but it's definitely just endgame worthy. Which is so funny because you don't even pick them up in the expansion. And then for the console we lose the fight so I go and upgrade my gear a bunch, I get a better belt, I get some boots. And as you can tell I'm gambling all of it because having to farm a boss like Antario is super miserable if every single time you have to revive all your skeletons using Iron Maiden. So I'm getting some more resistances, some more life, I make a new shield. And I was low on lightning resist so I ended up putting a perfect topaz in it. This is basically just an ancient splash in the classic. I also end up buying a plus 2 skill you want. And with all those upgrades it is time to fight the console again. And this time it goes much better as you can tell. Like plus 2 skills on a summon necromancer is just such a big upgrade. And now it's just a matter of kiting the skeletons towards the console and they'll figure it out from there. I'm also at the point where I have spacked into summon resist and I have some revives as well. So now I'm outnumbering the things that are attacking me. Which is always a major tipping point for a build like this. And you can see the difference a bunch of gear makes. And it's really just showcased by surrounding Mephisto here. And the revives just dealing a lot of damage with the firewall. And one thing you'll see me do in classic that I don't do in the expansion version of this. Is I'm using skeleton mages. And that's because I just need something that has some range. For mostly the maggot lair. But it's also just nice to have like this first circle of things that are taking damage. And as you can tell here the council like doesn't really know where to go because they're revived but there's no space. And the skeleton mages can just fire from the back so that's just a, a bit more damage. Because I found this build to be really lacking in damage when you're not the corpse explosion. Like you start off, get a few skeletons, 
and things start to die and it's all fine and then you corpse explosion some stuff and that all that's all nice and stuff and then you corpse explosion some things and that's all well and good but when you don't have a corpse to explode this build is very lackluster in damage in the classic version i mean that is mephisto with amplified damage while being surrounded by a bunch of stuff this is not a fast kill at all i mean he's gonna go down this is super safe but it's not fast while the expansion version i did of this had like 15 20 seconds boss fight and in act 4 once again all we have to work with is a golem and iron maiden and that made act 4 honestly just miserable on this character like please just give me a mercenary or something to work with i mean you can tell this is sped up quite significantly and it still takes forever to get going and then once you're going it's just business as usual use the skeletons blow up some stuff with corpse explosion claim your skill points and head towards diablo and i've mentioned this a lot of times but i'm gonna mention it again when in nightmare or hell just go right up to diablo he can't hit you with the lightning it makes the fight so much easier So after Nightmare, this is what we're looking like. Which brings us to Hell, where, yeah, it's just the same little trick. Use Iron Maiden until you can get a skeleton. And then use all of those skeletons to wage war on the legions of Hell. And use a lot of corpse explosion until you get to the act boss. And you can just tell at this point I'm outnumbering the monsters. So I am winning the fights. But honestly if you want to play this build just do it on the expansion. You have so much more to work with. The build feels much more powerful on the expansion. If you want to do like a challenge run of this build. Try the classic version. Because I do have to say it's very satisfying to have like your own army of minions. Just walk into a room and slowly but surely take command of the room. It just takes forever because I don't deal a lot of damage so the skeletons do end up dying. But there are so many corpses around I can just refill when I need to. I just wish that the skeletons would all target the same thing. Like I don't care about these afflicted at all. Please just target and Dario. But you have no influence on that. So it takes forever and my skeletons do end up dying in the end. So I have to go back to the cold place and do the Iron Maiden strat on some fallens. And I just decide to clear out some more so I can get some revives as well. So with 17 minions in hand and the golem, I lock them all up in the door for Andariel so I can't use my power and separate them all at all. So one thing you can do in a situation like this is just use a town portal, go back to town and come back in so you can position your skeletons. But at this point I figure like, okay, she's almost dead. It's fine. It is what it is. But her standing in the door is like the worst case scenario for this. And then I say goodbye to my little friends again and as I'm all alone into Act 2. Luckily I can hire a mercenary to make sure that I can get some stuff going again quickly. <clears throat> I can hire a mercenary. Well he's dead so let's just do the Iron Maiden thing again. Well guess what Golem's dead as well. And in hell it's just such a train wreck to get going. Like I feel like every single act should have like one or two skeletons laying around at the start of the act. To make sure that you can just get going on your summon necro because... Just skipping this part of the run would make this so much more fun. But we have some skeletons, so it is time for the Maggot Lair. And yeah, it's just a slowly but surely you will get through it kind of deal. For the expansion, you can hire a fire or lightning mercenary or cold mercenary in Act 3. They will get through the Maggot Lair very efficiently. Well, compared to this. But I ended up going for skeleton mages. Which is a choice I never expected to make in my life. But I'm not here to be entertained. I'm here to suffer so you guys are entertained. And girls. There are a few girls that watch the channel. But it's mostly men. I'm talking like 98% men. Which I can claim surprises me. But it really doesn't. And after the mega lair. It's time for the next miserable area in the game. So I almost end up dying in the arcane sanctuary. And escaping by a town portal. And... After that I just make it towards Duriel, where between revives, skeletons, mages and a golem, I have another very slow and tedious fight, but also a very safe fight. Because he can just Iron Maiden himself to death. 
And in the expansion at this point you have fanaticism, you have might, you have thorns and this fight is just a complete fucking cakewalk. And it's not a hard fight now but it's not as good. Like every, This entire build is like the same but worse. It's like we have summer necro at home kind of vibes compared to the expansion. I do end up finding this necromancer amulet which is amazing. And then we are towards Act 3 where we have a Cesarc the Burning who is always just a very strong fight. And he's physical immune so I just amplify damage him and corpse explosion him. But he is one of the main things you need to look out for in Act 3. And the other thing is of course the council. And you can just tell I'm surrounding the council members one by one. Because I really need to do that because when I don't things go very wrong very quickly. As you can tell by the number of skeletons I have plummeting, I lost the footage for the rest of Act 3. So sorry about that. So here's Act 4, me trying to get something going. I end up trying a Iron Golem as well. I did think about replaying Act 3, but it just... It didn't seem worth it. Like the council the second time I just walked in and killed them when I had refilled the skeletons. And the Mephisto fight and the Durants just aren't that spectacular. So I was like, ah fuck it, we'll just skip the footage for next time. This video is going to be long enough no matter what. So anyway, a few attempts later on trying to get something going, I do manage to revive a skeleton. And with that, we are heading towards the end of our journey. All I have to do is walk past some souls, because of course there's some souls. And then we find ourselves in the humble abode of Mr. Diablo. Where some ghosts give me a bit of a scare, but at this point I have 18 minions and a golem. So I'm just gonna stand around cowardly, I mean very general like. And I love this Lord the Size trick where if you surround Lord the Size he just bugs out and runs around and does nothing, it's great. And we have one final fight before we head towards Diablo with some Venom Lords. And once Infector goes down, it is time for Diablo and... But yeah, for the final time we are just using Iron Maiden to kill Diablo. I do think the fire golem looks really cool with the ice damage of Diablo himself. But yeah, at this point not a hard fight at all, so it's just a matter of time before he goes down. The biggest differences are just you have way more options to work with in the expansion. You have the thorns aura, you can get fanaticism, you can get might in every act. You have way more gear options, you have rune words, so you have a lot more to work with. This really just feels like I just mentioned, this just really feels like summon necro at home. But this is the final gear. But I would use none of this in the expansion. Like I would toss it on the ground and be very happy to never see it again. These are my skills. And that's it, Euronymous, level 59, a king. Thank you for watching, see you in the next one, bye bye. In this video I am playing a hardcore paladin in classic, so enjoy the stash. First off we start off by attacking busy boss, trying to get some money from a wand so we can buy a scepter, basically for damage, so we start off by putting points and resist fire, and you're thinking like why would I do that, but on level 6 you get holy fire, and holy fire deals a fuck ton of damage. So this is players 8, and you can see that I'm still kind of capable of killing him. I am also very capable of running away and hoping for the best, but lightning enchanted players 8 and not dying immediately is just fantastic to start off with so this is still players 8 and you're just seeing me pound down champion vile hunters without any problems which is fantastic experience same for the returned archers basically once you hit holy fire and you hit it high enough you can't really lose a normal except for when fanaticism ghosts are being terrifying and you can tell that i'm using a dagger that's just because it's the fastest stabbing weapon that i could find basically you don't deal melee damage anyway so you might as well just trigger it as many times as possible one little tip is just lure everything into a door and don't do this and then for the smith we just yeah we one on one him it's fine i was only one hit away from that and one is not zero so we gamble some gloves open the door 
run away from the shit behind the door and then we try and fight some tainted and basically we're just playing dodgeball here so we dodge to the left and we dodge to the right and in the meanwhile the aura is ticking down their life totals which is kind of what i'm waiting for here because between cursed and the high play account this is pretty terrifying but you know i'll survive i wouldn't make a video where i die in act one normal like there's just not enough material to work with yeah this was pretty dangerous and this is players 8 and Dariel and she dies then we head into act 2 and you can really tell that the holy fire aura is doing its work except against skeletons because those have high fire resist but we do end up just easily killing Radamant for the book of skill and we find a mace that is a cross flange that's a fantastic weapon against bosses because it has crushing blow and after that the aura is just high enough that we can go ahead and just kill everything by poking it down from a distance and that is exactly what we do so we do move along a bit but most things just die before we get there and look at this it's just beautiful like all the scarabs are gone same here, boop, gone. And then it's time for Duriel. This is players 1 Duriel. And look at that fight, this is just beautiful. And he's gone. And I waited on the den because then you can do that and it's very easy. Shamans do hurt though, so be careful. And once again, just lure things into a door and kill them very easily. I thought my resists were too low, so I just jammed some gems into a shield and then I walked along through Act 3. Well, once again, things just died very easily and almost comes through hard with that insane ring. We are respecting because I want to play a hammer then, so we respec into the hammers, we gamble some more equipment and then we head towards the council. Where we just, yeah, hammer them down. And then it's time for the Durants where the dolls are alive. Because they're called Undead Stygian dolls, get it? Oh, what you're seeing here by the way is the holy fire and the concentration aura on me that's just a visual bug because i haven't switched off the skill yet and then we walk up to mephisto and very easily kill him because we are a hammer dim and the rules of the game don't apply to us same goes for ishwal we just walk up to him and kill him and there goes act four for the rest it's the river of flame we go for a rune but this is classic so runes don't exist i find a plus two vigor staff and it's the best thing i've found so far so one thing you'll notice on my gear in this run is that gear in classic is just sad. Like that's just nothing really good. But yeah, hammers are very good, so we are just very easily killing stuff here. And it's Diablo time. And there are two ways to kill Diablo on normal, and it, the one way to do it is by not doing what I'm doing and just walking up to him. What you should be doing is dodging the lightning and spacing out. But well, I just wanted to face tank him. We also find a Mahim Oak. And then we find some light plated boots in Nightmare. And those are also dual resist with some MF. So that makes me very happy while we move along towards Andariel. We dropped us a Grand Scepter with plus two Blessed Hammer. And that is just an excellent weapon. That's like Spirit in Classic. Go again for the Book of Skill. We kill Fang Skin. Then we make our way through the maggot lair. As you can tell, it's not ideal, but we will get through it. And with that, we go to Tall Russia's tomb. And one thing you need to learn here is how to throw hammers across a door. And there's two ways to do it. You can just stand in the door and pray that you survive, or you can learn to aim. And one is very skillful, and the other is what I did. And then we had to do real nightmare and you can just face like him at this point in the game the bosses are just not very relevant anymore because you can just walk up to all of them and kill them and while Duriel is looking kind of scary like you can tell our life total is never going below 200 so oh, and don't forget to switch to the vigor aura when you're running away from him because holy freeze will make you very very slow but with that Duriel goes down and i find a belt with some resistances and I gamble some more gear, so there's some gloves, and then we had what well, Mephisto normal because I felt my gear was a bit underpowered. I also find a ton of gothic shields there. And I find Saigon boots, Saigon belts, and the Saigon shield, and this is basically your main gear for the rest of the run. So 3 piece Saigons gives me 50 MF. I also find a set amulet, it's not a Talrashas because that's not in the game. And I find a jade figurine when we head towards a nightmare act 3 and we also run away from a spider because we are sneakily arachnophobic. And spiders hit really really hard. And of course it's time for some souls. Because what else will we encounter here? 
So we ride the lightning and hope for the best. But it's nightmare. We have very good resistances, so we're fine. We got the gibbed in. But Orm is not coming through as clutch as he did last time. So we go and pick up our dirty brain. Kill some dudes. And this is me actually aiming the hammers around the door. Because if I don't, I will die here. And in the meanwhile, I head towards the sewers and towards the council again. I'm just running around so to make sure that they will go into the hammers. Basically what you want to do is track them into the hammers so they take a bunch of damage and die. Also almost clicked that fire shrine over there but do manage to stop myself. And after that it's time for the other half of the council and dolls. It's always time for dolls. I'm having a doll of a time in this Durant. I hate that pun so much. But yeah, look at me, I'm clearing molars and dolls get wrecked, fuck your life total. And more dolls. Run away, run away. And more dolls. Why is it always dolls? Why does the Durants just hate me? Why do I always get dolls? But after that I do end up finding level 3 with Mephisto in it and I can just stand next to him and punch him in the dick. I mean throw hammers. I find a pike but mercenaries aren't a thing here so it's useless. In the next 4 I just roll my way around while I'm throwing some stuff around. And at this point I'm basically strong enough to go into hell so I'm just gonna go ahead and kill stuff a lot. And the hardest part of this really is just aiming the hammers. I end up finding a ring with some gold resist and mana after each kill and that's just great. The dexterity doesn't matter because block percentage is not relevant. The dexterity does not give block in classic so it doesn't matter. After that I skip the Hellforge and I make my way towards the Chaos Sanctuary for the second time. But I find a rare Serpent Skin Armor which can't be a skin of the Viper Magi because that does not exist yet. I find a Death Mask but that's also not relevant because well, that's fanaticism on the floor and the Tal Rasha's Mask doesn't exist either. Lot the size. And then I kill the Demons again and make my way towards the big guy Diablo. And you can just stand right next to him. His lightning can't hit you if you stand right in his... Um, yeah. Let's call it face. Let's say you're in his face. And with that we are level 40. So we are going into hell. But our resistances are pretty low. So I decided to just use some flawless gems that I have laying around. And get some more resist. So this cost me a plus one skill. But my resist are very good now. So... We can move along and we are just doing the same thing as we did before, smashing the hammers around while luring everything to them. And basically this is just how you want to learn to throw hammers, just throw one or two and just make everything walk into them. Same here, these are a bit faster so I figured I'd show it, just one hammer and walk, one hammer and walk and just... Look, you can see things are dying, so that's what you want. And at this point in the barracks I decided, well maybe? This might be a bit risky to be level 40 in hell. I also find the third flawless diamond. And then we head towards the smith and I'm like, eh, this might be risky. Well, he uh, basically two shots me, so I might be right on that. And yeah, this is pretty terrifying because he hits like a truck. And I'm level 40 in hell, don't forget. So I do end up grabbing the Horodric Maulers. And just running around and kiting him. And just kite him some more. And at this point I'm bored so I'm gonna go and kill him. I use that rune scepter that I saw on the ground to make a new weapon. And it has some resistances at plus one skill so now I have max resist all. And with that I decide to go back to Nightmare because that was a bit too risky against the smith. So I'm like okay maybe need to grind some levels. So I almost die immediately in the chaos sanctuary. But Diablo does end up giving me a lot of experience. And I also find an armor, a splint mill, and after that I continue farming. 
And this is just players 8 on the Chaos Sanctuary and Nightmare. Which almost never goes almost wrong. And you can really tell the difference in a few levels. Look at how this fight goes compared to how the last fight against the smith goes. After that we're kiting some ghosts around. We head towards Andariol again. We can basically just yeah face tank now. I might have actually overdone it on the leveling. I went to like level 55 or something. And it, it might have been a bit too high. Because this is like 5 boss packs and champions and shit. And I'm just very easily clearing them. Like it's no problem at all. And because people demanded to see it the last time. This is me doing the maggot lair in hell. You just go up to a monster and kill them. One by one by one by one. Pro tip if you want to get through the mega layer, go right, always go right. After that I decided to gamble some more equipment, so I end up finding these gloves with some lightning resist and some MF. And that brings me towards the Cloud Viper Temple for the third time. And luckily there's a well there, because Fangskin hits really hard and is cursed. After that I go into the harem. Where things start to damage me, but I do end up making it towards the summoner. And the Canyon of the Magi. Where I kill some stuff. And basically I'm just showing like, okay, you can clear the game with this. But it's a hammer dim, so we kind of know this. But to be fair, this is less good than it is in Lord of Destruction in the full game. Because you don't have spirit, you don't have stealth. But yeah, you're still a hammer dim. That path of ice that I have with 3 sockets in it, with holy shield that has max block, because your block percentage on the shield is your actual block percentage, nothing of that attack space nonsense. It's just like if the shield says 55 block, you have 55 block with it, which is really cool, I like that way more than what they did in the full game. We are clearing our way throughout Act 3. And the Flayer Dungeon, which is always a very risky area. Lots of stuff that's really dangerous, like dolls and ghosts. But especially dolls. So this is me kiting around a unique pack of dolls. Again. Man, I was so sick of dolls at the end of this. And then I head towards the Ruined Temple because I want to get my stats. But as you can tell, this is not going ideal, so I leave the game. And I barely made it out alive, so that I had good timing there. And then I decided to fuck it, let's not take my 5 stats, instead let's survive the runs. So I head towards the sewers and the council again. And the council is just not a problem for a hammer dim. You have a wide open area to work with, so you can just very easily kill them. So you can get to do the runs and get fucked over by dolls again. Man, it was so many dolls in this run. This is just me being reminded- also fuck this room I'm out. But this is just me being reminded of, well, uh, I did the double enemy density run and it was all dolls and I got killed by a doll and they were like, yeah, we can do that again. So one little trick I do here is I go back to Nightmare to reset my map and just reroll to a good map because I was so sick of the doll. And I just walk up to level 3 and just kill stuff. And go towards everybody's favorite blue pinata again. Who is barely a threat at this point. And in Act 4 things do hit really hard so I have to be careful. But I end up finding a War Scepter. Which is a Storm Eye. And at this point I'm like man maybe I should have been a Fist of the Heavens Paladin. Which would have been cool but you never know. I could respec but I'm not going to respec for one final act. Once again, get rid of the Isual. And go and kill some damned in the city of the damned. And at this point it's basically just get to Diablo as fast as you can and be done. And because I get the max block for free, I have way more life than I usually have. So that's really nice. That's also a bit too good probably. But I do like it though. In the meanwhile, we are just dodging Lord to sides because cursed and fanaticism is terrifying. And once more fanaticism and lower resist. It's not better, I actually prefer the cursed I think. 
And we have the final Venom Lord. The Hammered Inn is just one of the best Chaos Runners in the game and this is no different in Classic, so... This is it, the Diablo fight. It's not even fast forwarded it. So this is our gear, as you can tell it's complete shit, but it doesn't matter, this is classic. If you're thinking like why does he have so little resist, in classic the resistances are lowered a lot less than in uh, the expansion. So we ended the game at level 62. And this is my build, this is the same as every other Amadin I've ever done, it's fine, you know how it works. I like this screen a lot more than the full game screen, and this is King Classic, and thank you for watching, see you in the next one, bye bye. Hi, my name is The Nuclear Rabbit and today I am going to be playing a sorceress in Classic. We start off the run with a quick cry about our stash size before almost dying to some dark hunters. I follow it up by running around the stony field a bunch while being chased by some carvers. Apparently this run is pretty hype because I draw quite the crowd as I run through the Tamu Highland. I throw some fireballs their way but it's just too many of them so I need to keep moving because there is no way I'm fighting them. Classic doesn't have any runes, however the tower is still the best way to level early on in the run because it's filled with unique monsters that give 5 times the experience. A hand axe drops for my troubles, which makes sense because I'm playing a caster. It is the Gnasher, an excellent early game item that will make a melee character very happy with its crushing blow and open wounds. The drops from the counters are much less impressive when she isn't dropping runes. The smith will be the first of many to get static down and finished off with just a few fireballs. We take his hammer and imbue our staff to see if we can roll some plus 2 skills. We do end up getting a skill but it's chain lightning, which we aren't using. We make our way to Andario and seeing as she is very weak to fire we very easily take her down. She rewards us with a rare ring for our troubles. The ring ends up having a bunch of mana and some fire resist. In the desert we encounter Flame Mame who drops us our first pair of gloves. We get another bit of fire resist and some magic find. And just as with the ring, very decent for the early game. Our habit of finding cool melee items continues as a death beetle drops us a unique sword. It's a shadow fang and it might not look like much but for a level 12 sword this thing has a ton of damage on it. If only we were a barbarian. Druids would do well with it too, but you know, they weren't born yet. In the maggot lair, I politely ask the beetles for some new shoes. They say they don't have any, but one of them ends up giving me the ones he ordered online that didn't fit, because he doesn't have feet. The beetle had obviously borrowed these as well, because they have Hassar's name on them. They crowned a whopping 20% faster run walk and 25 fire resist. Having found two flawed topaz, I make a quick upgrade to my helm. I buy a base from Charcy and stick in the two gems to get some more magic find going. In the claw viper temple, I laugh at the viper from the top of the stairs while I steal their amulet. Having thought the Duriel room was behind the entrance, I teleported over to the room in the back. As one does in someone else's home, I quickly light some stuff on fire, take a few of them down and leave. To enter Duriel's room, I must make a sacrifice. I have to give up my weapon before I can enter. I stick it in the hole and start drinking to forget all about it. In my drunken slumber from the thawing potions, I end up with some guy named Zanari who said he could defeat Duriel. So I take him with me into Talrasha's chamber. We run up to Duriel who starts pummeling away at us. Sanari ends up lasting much longer than I usually do and I get the static Duriel down to a sliver of his life before being forced to teleport around and kite some fireballs at him. As he goes down, a green amulet falls to the floor. I pick it up and realize it's an angelic amulet. In act 3, I become very sad as I look at my cold and lightning resist with both of them being at zero. The first thing to improve my situation is the belt I gamble from L6. With 18 gold resist and 21 lightning resist, this is a belt I could easily wear all the way into hell. Ormus ends up selling me an Amber Gnard Staff of Sorcery, and with the two of them and a couple of Thawing Pots, I head into the Mephisto fight. I stand next to him, use Static, and then Firewall him to death. In Act 4, I encounter a demon named Ishual. He has a 2 skill point bounty on his head, and with skill points being the most important thing in the world, I gladly make the demon run into my Fireballs to meet his demise. Hephaesto chases me through his backyard while I throw Fireballs at him. He has a Might Aura, so walking up to him and using Static will end up with me being very dead. But luckily, despite having a lava pool instead of an aquarium, he still has a lot of trouble taking fireballs to the face. Time to claim my reward at the forge. No rune drop, cause runes don't exist in classic. With my new gems, it is time to upgrade my helm again. I jam two flawless topaz in a skull cap and head into the chaos sanctuary. I pop the first two seals and the Grand Vizier of Chaos spawns in and at the moment I see him, I realize I have made a huge mistake. He is fire immune. I can use static to get down most of his life total, however I need a plan to get the last few slivers down. I considered using my respec and I looked at doing the den and the sewers to get my skill points, however I found another solution, a very tedious one but it just might work. 
Telekinesis deals damage, the amount is as high as my school grades, but there is something there. I start attacking the Grand Vizier with Telekinesis and lo and behold, his life total goes down. Stun locking the Vizier, I slowly commit Lang Che at his life total, until he ceases to be. I got away with it this time, but this won't keep on working. I decide that going for a pure fire build might not be the smartest idea and decide to start thinking about what to do. But those are all things for future me to worry about because right now there is a very big and angry demon in my way. Flames fly everywhere and when I run around to dodge them he gets pissed and runs out and tries to slap me. So rude. I run in and start staticking but I will lose the damage race so I have to back off. I go in for a second attempt but almost eat it to a lightning spray. With Diablo slapping me for 100 damage a pop I decide to keep my distance and start throwing fireballs at him instead. He runs in for another slap and I run away and dodge some more lightning. With the fireballs chunking away at his life total the demon ends up defeated, dropping me a giant axe and a small shield. The shield has 20 life but not much else to use as a caster so I sell it. The humongous axe is like a dream come true in a weapon for a barbarian, so I sell that as well. With normal done, I am now a countess, does that mean I drop runes now? With that philosophical dilemma on my mind, I start preparing for the harder difficulties. The best place to farm in classic is Mephisto normal, because high end items don't exist and he can drop almost every piece of relevant end game gear you will want. You can quite literally farm here until you are ready to beat the game. The drops start off with a pair of chain gloves, the chance cards are 30% magic find, a fun find. Next I end up finding a battle staff, which is Catan's staff, it has plus 1 to fire skills, the chest nets me a GG ring with 30 lightning resist and 28 fire resist. Doing all of these runs nets me a ton of gold, which always translates into fueling my gambling cravings. I end up winning a pair of 25 lightning resist boots, netting me a pair to switch into depending on what I need. They also have perfect gold find and a teensy bit of a math. The Mephisto runs are going much smoother at this point, well mostly that is. My resists are good and I've gained a few levels, all I'm doing is just keeping on farming until I get more endgame gear, in the meanwhile I find another angelic amulet. A few runs later I get rewarded with the next piece of endgame gear, whereas in the expansion this helmet is mediocre at best, Duskdeep has a whopping 15 resist all and some damage reduced, making for an excellent helmet and another happy addition to the gear. It's followed up by a unique ring, which ends up being a 26% Nagel ring. I decide to change up the farming to go and clean up some quests, which brings me to the ruined temple, where Serena drops me a unique maze. At first I'm disappointed in finding another amazing melee weapon, until I look at the stats and see that it has a whopping 50% fire resist. To complement my new crush flange I go to Faras, where I buy a shield with 3 sockets so I can make the classic version of Ancient Splash. At this point I am stacked and at a very high level for normal, so it is time to head into Nightmare. In Nightmare I go and pay the Den of Evil a visit for a plus skill and head towards Tristram, where my rare ring, I mean Cain, awaits to be saved. While making a safe path for the Horodrim to escape, I end up finding a set belt, giving me two pieces of hussars. Yet another thing that would be amazing, if only I was a melee character. The ring Akara gives me is trash, so I put Cain back in his cage. The outer cloister turns out to be a dangerous place, filled with quill rats, I end up barely making it out of the fight. The catacombs end up introducing me to Stormwhite, he loses his shoes in gratitude. Poison and lightning resist and the map, he's too kind. With Andariel still having very poor fire resist, I talk to her about the advantages of wearing a crush flange while sizzling her face off. It takes some running around to clear some trash mobs around her, but the fight ends with her exploding and dropping yet another amulet. This time however, it is of a dollar snare. In Act 2 I cannot delay the decision any longer, it is crawling with fire immunes and I need to decide what my second skill will be. I thought about going lightning or nova, but I just don't have the mana to support that. So I decided to go with a cold skill, the only question now being which one. I start off by going with blizzard, making cold damage rain from the sky sounds excellent. But the auto aim proves its worth, so exactly one monster later I am pissed off and annoyed at not hitting anything and decide to go for Frozen Orb instead, which has the added benefit of me being much more comfortable playing it, as I am very accustomed to working with blue balls. Frozen Orb is also amazing in the Maggot Lair, which is always a plus. The Durial fight starts off with me staticking him up to halfway and forgetting that in Classic you can just static him all the way down, no matter the difficulty. However, my muscle memory takes over and I stop staticking way too early again and start throwing fire at him. It gets the job done though. 
and I am rewarded for my troubles by being reminded that Barisa doesn't exist yet, three town portals and another Catan staff, so nothing. I ramp up the player count in the Act 3 Forest, with Eldritch still being a glint in his father's eyes, it is one of the best places in the game to get some levels. In the Spider Cavern I do something that is high on the do as I say, not as I do scale, and teleport blindly into a pile of spiders. Listen kids, I'll repeat this, do as I say, not as I do. This kind of stuff will kill you. I start off fighting my arachnophobia but end up having to retreat to survive. From here I can work my way back through Sazark and end up clearing it. The trend of me finding great stuff in boxes in the forest continues when I open up a chest and drop a pair of mage fists. With that plus skills, faster cast rate and mana regeneration I cannot think of anything better that could even drop in classic for my build, so I very gladly equip them. I go ahead and pick up the kid bin before making my way into the flayer dungeon, where I immediately drop another pair of some of the best gloves in the game. While they are for a different build, an energy shield sorcerers will be ecstatic about finding some frost burns, despite only one out of the five mods even being remotely useful and none of the others making any sense, a 40% increase to the mana pool is just enough to make even the calmest of energy shield wizards join up for an episode of sorcerers has gone wild. With my gear beyond stacked at this point, I will never need to farm for items again, so I decide to do some housekeeping and toss out my magic finding gear before heading to Travancore. I lure out the council members with the promise of some free candy and borrow the flail from them. However with the rest of them having seen what has just happened they decide to bunker down. So I just start shooting frozen orbs into the building to get rid of them. They try to run and hide but I am much too persuasive and convince them to let me through. I'm playing a frozen orb sorceress and I'm at the Mephisto nightmare fight with Max Resist. After 23 years of farming him I could probably do this fight in my sleep. Static clears up most of his life total and I finish up the fight with a few frozen orbs. The bone wand he drops turns out to be amazing with 20 faster cast rate, energy and cold resist. I would love to equip it but I'm using the strength on my cross flange to equip my boots. I wonder how bad my resist will be with all of those gone. I open up the stat screen and holy crap they are still amazing. I am so stacked that even losing a ton of fire, lightning and poison resist isn't a problem. So I decide to equip the wand and just put the stat points from my next few level ups into strength so I can equip the shoes. I follow it up by picking up my order of two skill points and making my way into the chaos sanctuary. With my newfound faster cast rate I feel much more confident in teleporting around so I decide that clearing content is for suckers and have a little chat with the Grand Vizier of Chaos again, this time killing him before I can even see what he spawned with. The Venom Lords end up being quite a close call as they spawn right on top of me, but teleport is busted so I create some distance and start throwing frozen orbs at them. Having beaten up his children, like Mario making his way to the Koopa Kingdom, Diablo decides to do a Bowser and finally comes down and checks what's going on. He throws fire and lightning at me and I decide that my life pool is too small to safely get close enough to static the demon, so I just start throwing frozen orbs at him. However, the demon runs up and stands right next to me. I am not one to look a gift lord of terror in the mouth, so I just go for it and static him while getting slapped around. I won't be able to tank the fire up close, so I need to move, but at this point the static has done its work. I finish up the fight with a few more orbs and am rewarded with a weapon that is named after Mark Wahlberg's Dirk from the 1997 move and boogie night and well there's a thing i never thought i would ever reference on this channel but there we are I head into hell. I start off with a resistance check and with my poison resist being the answer to everything in the known universe and the rest of them all being higher, these numbers make me very happy. My poison resist being my lowest is also immediately solved when I drop a venom ward in the underground passage. In the jail I quickly realize that even though everything is looking amazing on paper, the game can still be really mean when it wants to be. I barely make it out of the way of some archers, but then my ego takes over. I am a sorceress, I own this game, this cannot happen. So I decide to open the door and get back into the fight. I start throwing frozen orbs in there in a fit of rage trying to kill the things that stopped me. With the fallen cleared, I enter the room, my life total plummets down and I teleport out again. I need to calm down, if I keep playing like this I will die. I decide to do the smart thing and leave the archers alone, making my way to Andario. Having cleared out her minions, I start throwing fireballs at her before deciding that I would like to wear that venom ward I just found and drink some antidotes. This ends up being a smart call, saving my life as my life total jumps off a cliff in the face of all the poison damage that is thrown at me. I decide on a different approach and get some distance before throwing orbs to slow her down and fireballs to attack her low fire resist. 
She ends up dropping Meow rare Rusted Armor. I'm sure that if this was the expansion, that would have been a Scalder. In Act 2, I make my way towards the ancient tunnels to do some leveling, before heading into the Claw Viper Temple, where things get rough. So I decide to just start a campaign for Escalators for Vipers while they wave goodbye to their amulet. Despite wanting to teleport it badly, I let Frozen Orb carry me through the Maggot Lair. The tomb start off with saving and exiting in a panic, ending my streak of playing well after only an act. Oh well, still longer than I usually last. I start off by trying to static Duriel down, but my static range is so bad I barely get a cast off between his punches and seeing as how I have 500 HP and Duriel hits like a throw, I decide to kite him around his arena while whittling him down instead. A slow and steady proposition, but one that gets the job done without my life total hitting the fear at zero. In Act 3, I find out that the game is a fan of Limp Bizkit, with the Forge just having one of those days where everything is fucked and it wants to justify ripping someone's head off. And despite my best course of action being to stay away, I have to go in and encounter multiple fanaticism mobs and some mic monsters to top things off. For the first time in my life, I am happy to make it into the Great Marsh and get away from all of it. If only that was all of it. Not even a few seconds in, the souls start throwing their lightning at me. Realizing this forest hates the cure and isn't just a forest, I start my Great Marsh forwards because there's no way I'm teleporting this and coming out alive. Taking out my first boss pack of souls, I figure the way is now clear and I should be able to have a nicer time. However, the game immediately shoves that feeling right up where the sun doesn't shine, the Claw Hyper Temple. As lightning flies towards me even before I can see the clones, I end up luring a second boss out and my frozen orbs make quick work of it. At this point I decide to do like the story about the tortoise and the rabbit and take it slow, which immediately gets rewarded as the very next thing I encounter is a pack of might aura souls, whom I also lure out to my little inconspicuous cemetery and take out. Surely it'll be over now. Well, don't call me Shirley because the very next corner once again starts throwing lightning at me from beyond the screen. Seriously, is the game hungover or something? It's so mean today. Adding a fourth super unique clone to the population of Deadsville, I breathe a sigh of relief as I relax a bit by bullying some swamp dwellers into giving me the jade figurine. A few minutes go by before once again I am being shot at from beyond the confines of the screen. This time I decide to just go to the left instead, immediately getting rewarded for my decision by having enough lightning thrown at me to power a small country. On second thought I decide to not go left because it is a silly place and deal with the clones before finally making it into the flayer jungle. I go in slow but after defeating some puny flayers I decide that I am done with the forest and start teleporting through, almost dying only once in the process. Having retrieved Ormus's kitchen knife I look at my final reward, a 24 gold 5 fire resist with mana after kill ring, decide to wear it for the 5 fire resist anyway, cause the nagel ring wrapped around my fingers is completely useless at this point. Heading into the ruined temple I am stormed by fans who have subscribed to my channel, like you have right, and quickly pick up lame essence tomb. Hell trap and call always one of the hardest parts of any solo cell found run, often a giant dumpster fire of super unique enemies tossed together, luring them all the way back to the waypoint so I am shielded from being shot at by the other things because unlike on a friday night I only want to take one of them at a time. I kite around Ismael Vileland, using my experience with blue balls to yurdle him around until he hands me the flail. Now the flame finger ends up out healing my damage, so I decide that I am done being a responsible and alive human being and decide to teleport straight in to start luring away the council members. They don't need to go far, as long as they're not here. So I just pull them away from the orb a little, teleport to the back of the building, make the flail, run in and smash the orb before they can file a complaint about what is happening. Or so I thought. My first attempt at hitting the orb whiffs, but I circle around and go for it again, this time compelling the orb to explode. I teleport out to get a safe place to wait for the Durants to open, and once I've waited long enough and I'm sure it's open, I dive back in and escape the dangers of Travancore, heading into the comforting safety of the Durants. Because not is more comforting than teleporting a sorceress through the Durants of Hate. It just feels like home to do it that way. I wave at the dolls as I make my way through and enter level 3 for the Mephisto fight. And if teleporting through was home, this is like waking up in your own bed. Throwing frozen orbs at the demon has always been a steady thing throughout my life, no matter what else was going on. My sleeping with Mephisto metaphor is cruelly ruined when Void Voidbringer just casually walks into the fight. Like how, what, why, how did he get here, what in the actual hell, what is he doing here? Decades of runs and now I'm recording he decides to just barge in instead of just watching from the sideline. This complicates the fight immensely. Wyant can heal Mephisto and because my damage is low this means that if I don't get rid of Wyant he can just out heal everything and make the fight unwinnable. I question myself about what I have done to deserve this, what crimes I have committed 
that I am paying for so cruelly, as I am trying to get Mephisto to give me all his attention again and make Wyant piss off. Ending up with only Wyant, I get cursed. A sure tell sign I need to GTFO, so I head to Ormus. When I come back, the two demons are focusing on me, and while I am a massive attention hog, this is too much, so I teleport to the other side of the river again. I head back up, and this time, by some miracle, I end up pulling only Mephisto to the other side and decide that to keep him here, he needs a target, so I just start face taking his attacks while throwing orbs and praying for the best. Frozen Orb ends up taking the fight, and with Mephisto joining the ranks of the dead, I am finally done with Act 3, so I take the portal into Act 4. Act 4 starts off with me teleporting so fast the game can't even keep uploading. I hadn't seen this since the LOD times, but apparently it still happens in the remaster. Makes sense, but I hadn't seen it yet, so I give the game some time to catch its breath and head in for a second attempt. With nothing stopping me, I get to the final waypoint. From here on out, it is all a matter of safety, consistency and survival. So I immediately start teleporting into the Chaos Sanctuary like a lunatic. Giving no thoughts to safety regulations, I make my way to the pentagram in the middle. First things first, I need to to make sure that I have a safe haven to work from at all times, so I start clearing out the first few stragglers. With the pentagram conquered, I start working my way through the Chaos Sanctuary. I decide to go up and check with the Grand Vizier of Chaos first, once again pulling some stragglers and getting rid of them. I end up blowing a few stragglers from the Infector side as well, but as long as they aren't extra fast, it is not a problem. With the focus of my build having shifted to Frozen Orb, my fireball damage has started to become lackluster. A fact shown by every Oblivion Knight being cold immune and ending up taking forever to kill. Everything that isn't cold immune however goes down without a problem. And for once in this run, something is easier than expected. The inhabitants of the Chaos Sanctuary are on vacation and except for a few stragglers here and there, it's completely empty. Seriously, this might be the emptiest Chaos Sanctuary I have ever seen. I could just walk up to the Infector spawn and only needed to kill one pack of Champion Ghosts to get to the Lord to Sai spawn. With the Chaos Sanctuary being cleared, I summon the size, clear his knights and decide that it's time to nut up or shut up. So I face tank the size while throwing fireballs at him until he goes down. With the size's lot now vacant, I decide that I do not want to deal with more enemies like that. So when I encounter Mold Rule, who is extra strong, extra fast and able to cast low resist on me, I decide to pull him away and introduce him to his new living quarters, all the way far out in the back. Having pulled him away far enough, I wave goodbye and teleport back to the Grand Vizier spawn location and throw a few orbs at him. With that, it is time for the final fight. I decide that I do not want to risk it with the statics, so I stand far and safely away throwing orbs at Diablo. The demon has obviously not read the script of this movie because he starts imprisoning me in bones like I haven't been telestomping the entire game. I keep throwing orbs at the demon, hoping to explode them straight in the middle of him because that makes all the shots hit and deals him the most damage, but I accept it when I have a non-perfect shot because the only thing I want at this point is to survive. I don't care about it looking good anymore, I just want to win. Even near misses are dealing me hundreds of damage and that is an exchange rate my health pool cannot afford. I need to be careful here, I need to dodge every single beam and flicker of fire that is thrown my way. After a battle not dominated by static and thus actually being really fun and engaging instead of a massive static fest, Diablo goes down dropping another set amulet, netting me my third angelic amulet for the run. But more importantly, the run is completed. This was my first time ever playing a sorceress in classic. So here's the final recap. I'm using this rare bone wand, a dusk deep, a dual resist rare armor, a prismatic amulet, ancient splash at home for a shield, dual res magic find boots, a dual resist ring, a dual resist belt, another dual resist ring, and for gloves I am still using the mage fist. Stat wise I did strength for the gear requirements and I went up to 41 dexterity in case I would end up finding a spectral shard unique blade. However, it turned out to be a hopeful spec because I never did end up finding it before finishing the game at level 50. I ended up with 40 faster cast rate, 37% extra fire skill damage, minus 30% to enemy cold resistance and went down all the way to 22 mf in the end after dumping all my mf gear. For skills I maxed out frozen orb and put a few points into the cold mastery. If I would level up more I would put more points into it. For the lightning skills I have 1 in static, 1 in teleport and 1 in telekinesis which actually ended up saving the run. For my fire spells I was working on maxing fireball and I would follow that up by putting more points in the fire mastery. I would put all the remainder points into the synergies for fireball. And there we have it, queen Vueball. If you're still here let me know what you think about this style of content and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet and I'll see you all in the next one. Hi, I'm the Nuclear Rabbit and welcome to this video. In the last few months I have played through Classic with every single class, except the Amazon, so I decided to change that. 
We start off with the usual cry about our stash size and head into the cold plains. I figured a boazon would be fun for this run, so I quickly start making my way through and start shooting. Okay, this is already taking forever and I'm not even out of the cold plains. A couple of minutes just to take down some random monsters in the cold plains, surely it can't get any worse than this. Let's go and farm some Rakanishu, get some levels, see how it goes. And yeah, this is kind of disappointing. Yup, still disappointing. Oh dear lord, this is just sad. Okay, no worries, no worries. We have magic arrow, maybe that can fix it. Nope, still just really sad. I know how to meddle this. Hello and welcome, this is the Nuclear Rabbit and today I am going to be playing a Javazon True Classic. We make our way to the underground passage and start throwing poison javelins. The way to use these the best is by throwing them ahead and then letting the monsters run into them. Ah, look at that, things are dying. The sweet bliss of other things death. In the barracks, things go less smooth and I get myself stuck in a corner, where I make a valiant escape. Well, anyway. Hi, welcome to the video. This is the Nuclear Rabbit and today I am going to be playing an Amazon True Classic. We head out through the Blood Moor and into the Stony Field where I use the power of a spear to stab Rakanishu in this phase. Things get tight though because I'm barely paying any attention at this point and I didn't notice I was all the way down to 1 HP. Luckily I do end up surviving and taking care of the goblins. I mean we can't have me dying in Act 1 now can we? That would never happen and has never happened before of course. I decide to go for a lightning based build and spec into power strike to get some added electric damage to my attacks, which I follow up by making my way into the tower to go and farm some experience and myself. That is, until I remember that the countess doesn't drop any runes. Because runes do not exist in classic, no matter, the tower is still the best place to level in the early game, so no regrets here. I go ahead and wave at the smith as I grab the hammer. He isn't very happy about this though and starts charging me. I very easily take him down because power strike isn't as broken as the skill I'm going to be using for most of the game but it's still pretty damn good. Grief burn the quick drops me an Artex belt which is always a nice way to get things started on the gear side. It has 40 gold resist but only 8 slots for potions. That is until we upgrade it. The recipe for that requires a gem and 2 runes that don't exist in classic. God damn it. In the first of many boss fights I'm going to do this to, I walk up to Andario and have a very high voltage fight with her. Seriously, if you have never seen a Lightning Amazon takedown bosses, you are in for a treat on this video, because it's gonna be electrifying. In the rocky ways I am once again very busy not paying attention, so I walk around without potions or HP, nearly ending my third Amazon attempt as well, I mean my first attempt, first attempt, just my first attempt here. Having reached level 18 I get to use Charge Strike. Charge Strike is a skill where you strike something in the face and as a reward get balls of lightning charged out of it as well. Yeah, the skill names in Diablo are pretty on the nose. So in the halls of the dead I can get rid of whatever is going on in here pretty easily. Cause Jesus that's a lot of monsters for a single room. I pick up the cube and use it to roll myself a weapon. Nothing special but it will get the job done for now. A quick visit to Elzix for some gambling nets me nice gloves with some magic find and I'm immediately rewarded for it in the far oasis with a unique ring. Which turns out to be a 5226 Nagel ring. The maggot lair isn't much of a problem, or normal, and I go ahead and grab myself the staff and the viper's amulet. One thing I haven't talked about is how charge strike splits up into multiple bolts hitting multiple enemies and getting a spread going that way. However, egg bosses are thick and will get hit by every single bolt. And if you're wondering how good that is, yes, it's as good as you think it is, yes. So Duriel melts in the wake of my bolts and goes down after just a few stabbings. The Jade figurine gets added to my toy collection in Act 3, Sasak hits me really fucking hard and for some reason my balls just aren't hitting these zombies. Once they hit however, they drop me amazing 29 light dress, 20 run walk, 19 mf boots that will easily carry me up to the end game. I activate the fire for the Gibbon and go for a quick round of inventory tetris which almost ends up costing me my life. The ring however is useless and I make my way towards Travancore, where I find Hosaurus boots from a box. Usually something that will make me very happy. 
However, I already have the sweet lightning resist boots, so it's definitely a case of why now, why not on another run. I have an intense fight with the console in which I casually obliterate all of them. Man, this is so much better than the stupid physical spears on that yes, I know, I still need to do as well. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten, it still haunts me every day. The ring that dropped during Traven Call is perfect for Mephisto because it has 29 lightning resist. And now I get into the best part of the Durance of Hatred, the part without dolls and with lots of farming, also known as level 3. <coughs> I said without dolls. Oh god damn it, every single one of my Mephisto runs is going to have dolls, isn't it? I hate this game. Anyway, Mephisto goes down easily and I make my way towards Act 4 first. It starts off with the outer steps, only to be greeted by the first of many, many, oh so many lightning immunes. Don't worry though, I do have a plan for those, but we'll get into that later. Killing Israel gets me 2 skill points and I head towards the Hellforge, where I get rid of Hephaesto. Grab the hammer and it doesn't even matter that I don't get any runes, cause I am here to get me some topaz. Because before heading into the Chaos Sanctuary, it is time for the biggest farm of the entire run. In Classic, the best source for good items is Mephisto Normal. Which really changes the momentum of the game quite a bit, cause you get your endgame gear at the end of Act 3 Normal, instead of never fucking ever in the expansion. Classic doesn't have elite item bases, exceptional uniques like a Viper Magi or a Gaze don't exist. So the best gear you can get always falls into one of two categories, one a bunch of cobbled together stuff that pretends to be good, or two science. I'm not kidding, science is endgame GG stuff in Classic, I mean you can clear the game with it in the expansion as well, I mean I've done that, but I seriously don't think there is anything better than science for a lot of characters in Classic. Also, I fucking hate dolls. The drop start off with a unique full helm, which is a Dusk Depot. Next up, a Hawkmail, which gets me cannot be frozen, faster run walk, and some cold resist. A boss pack of dolls drops me a Saigon Shield plus one to my skills and a nice chance to block, don't mind if I do. However, I don't have the strength, so I quickly go and clear the den for my respec and go ahead and use it. Block in Classic doesn't work with dexterity by the way, the percentage on the shield is just the percentage you get, so I get almost max block for free here, which is kind of insane. I go ahead and put 75 in strength for the shield and 65 into dex for the throwing spear. Oh well, I did 60, but we'll get there. The rest goes into Vitality. Skill wise, I spec into Charge Strike, because it's one of the best skills in the game and melts everything it comes across until it really, really, really doesn't. But that is a problem for future me, and like I said, I do have a plan. The rest of my points go into prerequisites and synergies. I buy a superior pylon from Halbu, because this is the exact moment I learned that throwing weapons can't have mods in classic. Yay, I'm sure not having any access to good physical damage or anything like that won't be a problem anytime soon, who needs it after all? A all of a time later, Mephisto drops me an amulet, which turns out to be angelic, could be useful if I find the ring as well and some chance gods, but they are only 27% so not really worth it, especially compared to the rare chain gloves he drops me next. These have 22 lightning resist and 21 mf, these I will gladly use. A rare amulet with 99 resists on it drops as well, you don't need as much resistance in classic, so instead of minus 40 in nightmare and minus 100 in hell, you only get minus 20 and minus 50 respectively, which means that this amulet knocking 100 off goes a big way towards closing the tab on your needed resistances. With all of this fancy new gear I go ahead and continue my journey through the river of flame towards the chaos sanctuary. In the expansion a javazon clears out normal and nightmare for basically free. And it's the same in classic, well that is, unless you are an idiot like me and get stuck. Besides that one little tidbit, I have no trouble in the sanctuary. I even grab a nice ring along the way and get ready for the Diablo fight. Which lasts about as long as I usually do. I'm already very high level, so I go ahead and wave hello to corpse fire. Try and imbue the throwing weapon, but alas. It doesn't work. After the Andario fight, I make myself a diamond studded shield because if everything dies in a few hits anyway, I might as well get more resist. I mean, there's just no point in overkilling something with a thousand damage or ten damage, it's still dead, so might as well be safe. I go ahead and make short work of Rodamond and Duriel. Grab the git bin, get a ring, and you can sell your weapon to NPCs to refill it as long as they have enough space in their inventory to buy it back. It's nicer than running back to the repair guy. 
especially in Act 3 where he's on the moon. So I checked if there's enough space and it's gone. It isn't as big of a deal when your weapon doesn't have any mods, cause you can just gamble a new one in every act, but man that is silly, I even checked for the space. The console goes down easily, as does Mephisto. The planes of despair make me do some soul searching, but with my resistances maxed, I'm not too scared of them and decide to go in anyway. Viper Eater the unholy over here is like many things that will be here from now on, lightning immune. So I need to stab him, which usually is rough but doable, you just use your jabs and you have like some elemental damage on them, a bit of physical damage and they die. However, my javelins don't have any mods, which means I don't have those things, which means I can't kill him. So my efforts of killing him are about as effective as my college degree is, and since I studied history, nothing happens here at all. Just kidding, I didn't finish college. I just walked away from it, like I do here. Later on in the river of flame, I am a girl stuck in between a group of big burly men that want to pound me. However, I have seen that movie before, so I go ahead and save an exit. And make my way through the chaos sanctuary. I'm playing the best boss killer in the game, so yes, the Diablo fight went well. However, before getting into hell, I do want to do some more farming, cause I feel a bit underleveled for it. I need a place with tons of things to kill, no resists, and lots of experience. Oh yes, I know just the place. Hello, cow level, we meet again. Even on level 40, a javazon makes short work of players 8 nightmare cows, and even though I did throw out my javelins once or twice, and had to refill them again at Keats, and despite using the wrong town portals and risking my life for no reason a couple of times, I very quickly reached level 50 and headed to hell. Where fun goes to die. Remember all the fun times where everything just died by pressing a single button? The laughs we had, the enjoyment we found, the fulfillment of killing it all. Yup, all gone, it's time to fucking suffer. Corpse Fire is the first to make our life much harder than it used to be. And at this point, I might as well call his fight a dumpster fire. Get it? Get it? I do pick off weaklings every once in a while, but most of Act 1 is filled with kiting, running, and lots of crying as I run around the piles of lightning immunes in my path. In the catacombs I close the door on a boss pack, which despite being useless because they can just open the door, makes me feel safe. And I hear Andario calling, and even though she's poisoned and I don't want to break my change, I do take her down. And I head into Act 2. I'm able to use the lightning immunes in the sewers to my advantage and use the spread of lightning fury to deal with Rodamont. Oh yeah, I hadn't explained lightning fury yet. It's a skill that shoots lightning everywhere when I throw javelins at a monster. And it is very furious. Yeah, the names are really, really that on point. I head into the maggot lair, where I get completely brick walled by a beetle. Surely my Valkyrie and Pratum together can clear that out, once they pass the corner. <sighs> With Pratum dying of sadness, I decide to go pick up the amulet first instead. This is also the moment I had been foreshadowing to earlier. Remember when I said I had a plan? Well, this is it. I can't deal lightning damage to the lightning immunes, and I don't have physical damage, so I'm going to respec into a poison lightning javazon. And I'm going to use Plague Javelin for range stuff and Charge Strike for poison immunes. I know, it's rocket science. The only downside to this is that Charge Strike now deals a lot less damage, cause its synergies don't have any points in them. But like my partner tells me when I ask her why she's with me, it's good enough. And with my new skills packed into, I get to kill lightning immunes. I mean, look at that, isn't it beautiful? I go ahead and poison every single bug that's left in the mega lair and collect my stuff. Tall Russia's tomb went mostly fine, except for the part where it became a huge mess and I got sandwiched between poison immune dried corpses and might aura skeletons. I even went back at it from the start, but I quickly realized that clearing the entire tomb again was going to be faster than suffering through this, cause that stupid sarcophagus is just not going down. So that is exactly what I did before making it to Duriel. And despite Charge Strike being much less powerful than the skill I used to know, I don't have any problems defeating Duriel and head into Act 3.
Usually, Act 3 Hell as a Lightning Amazon is about as fun as getting your javelin shoved violently up your ass pointy side first. However, because I have plague javelin, it isn't too bad at all. I have to get away from one annoying pack of bugs at the start of the jungle, but manage my way through the rest of it just fine. Very slowly, but fine. I get a very close call in the spider cavern, where Cezark thought it would be a good idea to be cursed, extra strong and might enchanted, which is a lot of words to say he hits really fucking hard and will kill me in one blow if I don't watch out. Luckily I have a Valkyrie to tank for me instead. One kit bin later I get the hugest of huge upgrades to my gear, managing to upgrade from a 25% to a 26% fire resist ring. The Flayer dungeon goes mostly fine cause the Valkyrie is able to tank everything. So I make my way into the sewer. And I've mentioned this a bunch of times throughout my videos already over the last 2 years because I've been doing this channel for 2 years already, thank you all so much. But anyway, the sewers are my least favorite area in the game. It's tight, it's dark and it's a train wreck all around. But this might actually be the worst time I've ever spent in there. The horror skeletons aren't dying from the poison, cause they are very resistant to it and unravelers are reviving and healing them. However, that isn't the worst part. Remember my build? Poison for range and Pikachu for up close and personal. Enter the dolls. These are a perfect counter to my build, cause you don't want to kill them up close. They will explode in your face and that will result in lots of death. And because it isn't the expansion, the Valkyrie doesn't quite get enough damage to kill them either. Especially with them getting healed and revived. This means my only option is to just charge strike at them from up close and just hope for the best. Seriously, every single one of these little shitlings dying could be the end of the run. So I decide to hire a mercenary, surely that will help. I also didn't even realize I got one for free cause I completed something or another. Anyway, let's see how good he is, let's find out together. So, a grand total of 2 hits later, he is down for the permanent count, they are so bad in classic. So, it's time for the only solution I know at this point that doesn't involve me risking the run on literally every single enemy. Time to run around like a headless chicken hoping to get lucky, or as I call it, my 20s. It took a few tries, but I do end up finding the gloom bats that indicate level 2. Grab the heart and get the hell out of dodge, cause I was not having a good time in there. The council isn't too bad, I deal a lot of poison damage, and they have no poison resistance. It takes a while, but down they go. The Durans gets a bit messy, but I make it through unscathed and go ahead and explain how high voltage works to Mephisto before heading into the final act. I order some skill points that got delivered at the door and as I round up the plains of despair and the city of the damned, I can crack a smile. My plan has worked, I am through all the areas with the piles of lightning immunes. I love it when a plan comes together. So now I can go ahead and use my final respec to become a pure lightning based javazon once again, so I go ahead and do just that. And all will be well with the world again. Oh, stat wise I did strength index for gear rest into vitality as usual. I also put a bunch of points into the Valkyrie cause I will be encountering some lightning immunes for sure, but she can deal with those. I quickly make my way through the river of flame. And to no one's surprise a Javazon has no problem clearing out the chaos sanctuary. So I start blasting my way through, only taking very long breaks when the lightning immunes show up. But then I blast again, and get bored to death again by lightning immunes. After having finally gotten rid of the Grand Vizier of Chaos by luring him out and jabbing him and hoping that I won't die to his fire explosion, it is time to pray that the other two keepers of the seals aren't lightning immune. First off, Lord decides. I get lucky here, he isn't lightning immune and I get to clear him. The Infector also plays nice, so I get away with forgetting to check them first. And after all of that, I head into the Diablo fight, where I need to be careful cause he actually hits like a truck when you're this low level. But I end up clearing the run. 
completing the set, meaning I have now beaten Classic with every single class. And while my gear and build are displaying in the background, don't worry, I will play more Classic. I'm looking forward to trying other builds and challenge runs on it as well. But for now, if you like the content, please consider subscribing or even becoming a member. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.